interstate versus intrastate. One of those topics that is easy to understand once you grasp the concept of it, but it's confused by so many. And if you get this wrong, it can lead to compliance audits from the federal government or state. It can lead to serious fines, even company shutdowns. So you're gonna to wanna to watch this video to make sure you understand. Now stay tuned until the very last couple slides that I'm gonna be talking about, because those are the two points that gets everybody in a lot of trouble. Welcome back to DOT University. I'm Ryan, the DOT guy. So make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and ring that bell so that you can get informed every time we put up new content like this that to help you stay off the radar. Interstate versus intrastate, a topic that is fairly simple, but yet so many people get it confused. And I can't tell you how many times I get a phone call or people come up to me in my training and they say intra, inter, and we're confused on exactly what that means. So it is absolutely imperative that you get this right, because if you get it wrong, it could cost you thousands, tens of thousands in fines. It could even cause you and your company's transportation network to get shut down so you cannot carry uh, in commerce. So you've got to get this right. So first off, both the terms inter and intrastate commerce are defined in 49 CFR 390.5T. So as usual, you've got to RTFB, read the federal book. So Intrastate means any trade traffic or transportation which is not described in the term interstate. Okay, kind of a rick ridiculous description, feds. Come on, you can do better than this. But basically what that means is transportation that originates within that state and stays within that state. Okay, now a special note. One of the things that we've got to remember is if you're an intrastate carrier, a lot of times states have less regulations. They kind of they change some of the rules for intrastate commerce, so that's kind of important. But it's also important to know because if you're actually carrying interstate within your state and you don't realize it and you're going by those lesser rules, it can really open you up for some severe risks. Interstate commerce is also defined in 49 CFR 390.5T. Okay, now interstate is the transportation that's in between states. Okay, so it's a trader traffic and point number one states that this is the, the most easiest and the obvious one is a point within a state to a point outside that state. Okay, that that one's pretty simple. But point number two is a little bit more interesting two points within a state, but you travel through another state. And then the last one, this is the one that is mind blowing is two points within the state but the trade of the traffic originated outside and it terminates somewhere inside that state, okay? Now, another special note down here, remember interstate, whenever a load or a portion of the cargo is classified as interstate commerce, then all DOT regulations are applicable, okay? All of them, um, so it's super, super important. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and break these three points down. We'll start with the first one. Now I'm gonna use Colorado. Number one, it's a square, it fits the screen really well, and it's the home of Front Range Compliance Services and DOT University. Even though we work with companies around the nation, um, this is where we're based out of. So we got Colorado in here, okay? And you can see in my example here, the, uh, the trip is designated by the red line to show the route. Okay, so interstate commerce is going to be a place within a state and a place outside the state. That one is the obvious uh, choice, okay? Uh, everybody should understand how easy that one is. Now, point number two, okay, now this could be, you know, maybe a mountain highway shut down, you can't get through it, so you've got to go around, take a different route. Um, maybe your driver just decides to go up and hit a route uh, or visit a family member um, in another state, uh, whatever it could be. But this is when a company uh, has a driver that goes to two locations within the state, but they travel through another state. So in this one, if somebody left, say, uh, Denver, Colorado, and they wanted to get to a town up in the mountains in Colorado, and the mountain highways were closed like they were here this, uh, you know, these last few months due to all the forest fires we had, Okay, then that, that truck could take that route, go all the way up to say Cheyenne or Laramie, and then cross over on Interstate 80 and drop back down into one of those other points within Colorado. 
Okay, now that would be two points within the state, but through another state. That would also be designated as interstate commerce. Okay, now this last point, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the A1 Widget Company, okay? So A1 Widget Company, based in Colorado, they go through, they have a customer that comes to them and purchases, say, 100,000 widgets. Now, A1 Widget Company has their, their widgets made overseas, okay? So what happens is, is when I ordered my 100,000 widgets, a1 Widget Company decides they're going to drop ship those 100,000 widgets to me. They're coming directly to my business. So they order them. Those widgets get loaded onto a boat, okay, which in turn is brought into the port. The port in on the west uh, coast and then loads those, those widgets up on a train, and the train brings them to Colorado. Okay, Now, interstate commerce, two points within a state as a part of a trade or traffic or transportation that originates outside of a state or outside the United States. So now these red lines signify all the inter interstate routes, okay? So the train brings them into the city. They get dropped off at the, the, the train station, right? And they get loaded in, the intermodal container gets loaded into a, a trailer. And that route then turns, it goes to the warehouse, okay? That is interstate commerce because the route is still en route to its final destination. At the warehouse, then A1 Widget Company takes that, loads that on truck number three right here, okay? And truck number three then delivers the widgets to the widget company, all right? And those widgets say he takes them from Denver to Southern Colorado, okay? Loads them down. This route, even though these two, this truck has never left the state of Colorado, that is an interstate load because it is the part of the trip. So two points within a state, but part of the trader traffic that originated outside or terminates outside of the United States. So it's all the way to its final destination. Now let's go ahead and change that scenario just a little bit. Let's say I order my 100,000 widgets from A1 Widget Company, but A1 Widget Company, since that's what their business is, they order 200,000 units, okay? Then the same widgets, they get brought to them, they get dropped off. It's an interstate load all the way across till it gets to the warehouse. And then once it's at the warehouse, A1 Widget Company goes through, they divide up that product to all their customers, and then they redispatch that load from their warehouse to the point in Colorado, which changes the overall shipment. The shipment then terminated at the warehouse and then a new shipment was made. Therefore, the route from the warehouse to the company delivering my widgets now became intrastate commerce. That last leg was redispatched. Now, why is that so important? Well, because intrastate commerce, okay, gives you some easement of the regulations. Now, I can't give them all to you because we could probably talk for an hour on states and some of their exceptions that they have, but I'm going to talk about some of the common ones that we kind of run into, and these are called variances. Typically, federal law sets the standard and states aren't allowed to have a lesser law, except for in DOT, there are certain allowable variances that they're supposed to have. And here's just a few examples, okay? And remember, you got to check with your individual state, okay? So... General definition, that can be changed. Some examples, the state of Texas, okay, they're not, for intrastate, they're not considered a commercial motor vehicle until they're at 26,000. Just so happens, that's the same weight that CDLs kick in, okay? And if you don't know what those are, make sure you check out our video on determining CDLs. In Colorado, okay, our state here in Colorado, you don't become a commercial motor vehicle until your combination is 16,001 pounds or more. And then Utah, well, Utah copies of federal regulations, they're a 10,001 pound or more state. Now, determining CDLs, or I'm sorry, determining commercial motor vehicles is absolutely so important. So make sure you check out our, our video identifying your fleets. What is a commercial motor vehicle for interstate? I will do some state to state videos. We we'll include some links below this video to get you those, those quicker, um, but make sure you check them out. Medical certificate, that is another one. That's that's one of those, those things that if you're a non-CDL driver, you don't have to have a medical card, okay? But if you cross a state line, okay, for instance, somebody leaves Colorado and drives up there, I guarantee you the troopers on the other side of the state line are waiting for Colorado license plate plated commercial motor vehicles that are non-CDL because they know chances are that individual is probably not going to have a medical card. So again, now some states do require medical cards and the DOT requires 
anybody who drives a commercial motor vehicle to have a medical card in interstate commerce, okay? It's just the states can change that one. Government vehicles, give you an example of that one, the DOT regulations, they exempt government regulations and operations from general requirements, okay? Um, however, states can pull those back in. So Colorado is a perfect example we here in Colorado pull governmental operations back into it. So your city governments who think, oh no, we don't have to comply with DOT rules and regulations are incorrect. Colorado pulls them back in. So do some other states. Hours of service is another big one. You know, take uh, North Dakota, for instance. The, the state of North Dakota, they have their own local hall, short hall um, exception. Okay, so that, that's a big one. Some of the states have some variances from the way they're doing some of the hours of service, for usually for non-CDL operations. Uh, but you're going to want to check that stuff out. Make sure you check with your individual states so that you're completely familiar um, with what's going on. So thank you for joining us. Hopefully you got some good information. Remember, you know, if some of this is confusing, just rewind it a little bit, re-listen to it. If you're still confused, hit the, the, the comment button, you know, drop us something down below. We will try to monitor, get everybody's questions answered too. Um, and then like and subscribe. Again, make sure that uh, you're watching for our updated content as it comes out so you and your company can stay off the radar. All right, y'all have a good one and be safe out there.